This is ESPN Esports. I'm Ardo Ocal, joined by Jacob Wolf. We are breaking down the news that Jacob just tweeted, and here is his tweet. Uh, full story on ESPN. Evil Geniuses has won the LCS bidding process for the slot previously owned by Echo Fox over the likes of Dick Clark chairman Alan Shapiro and Washington Justice owners. The deal is comparable to a previous bid of $30.25 million. So the big news here, Evil Geniuses back in League of Legends acquiring what was previously Echo Fox's LCS. CS spot. Uh, this is a huge week for Evil Geniuses, Jacob. Uh, we just got the news that they are back in CSGO, acquiring NRG CSGO team, and now with League of Legends. Uh, just take us through Riot's decision to award this to Evil Geniuses. Right, so in August, Riot acquired and took back the slot that was owned by Echo Fox after Echo Fox could not come up with a resolution of their own. Then that process started where Riot has gone for a little bit over 30 days now of simply taking applications, evaluating. They held several different meetings with people where the LCS team, the people that work behind the scenes, so Commissioner Chris Greeley and a few others, started to travel around various parts of the U.S. to visit the investors for these teams that were looking to get in. Um, and, you know, among those was Alan Shapiro and Evil Geniuses, and Evil Geniuses ended up coming out on top. This is not surprising, to me at least. I think that Evil Geniuses, they were originally interested in Echo Fox before Riot seized the slot. They have basically done a full 180 in terms of this summer of really becoming a dominant force in the esports space again since they were acquired in May by a company called Pete Six, which is a Chicago-based investment firm. And so I think Riot, Riot had limited options this time compared to the previous instance where they had almost 200 applications for the LCS the first go round in 2017. They also had a much shorter amount of time to make this decision. They had the entire fall last time. Now they, they really only had a little bit over a month because free agency starts in November right after Worlds. So you, you kind of have to get it together very quickly and give these teams appropriate time to start branding and everything else. So, you know, this was it was a short amount of time for Riot, but I think that they've made the right selection. Talk about the roller coaster ride that has been Evil Geniuses. They haven't been involved with League of Legends since 2014. They've gone through a lot of restructuring. They've gone through sales and changes in ownership since that time. Take us through that and where they are today. So Evil Geniuses was originally founded by Alex Garfield, who many consider one of the like grandfathers or founding fathers of our industry. Uh, Alex was also the founder of a company called Good Game Agency, which is like a branding and marketing agency. Good Game was acquired by Twitch in December of 2014, and, and shortly thereafter, there were some disputes. Twitch, part of their business is they also represented teams on sales and sponsorships, and so they essentially made it where they would take and they would sell sponsorships for teams using their large sales team. Um, they currently do this with Team Liquid. They previously did this with Cloud9 and TSM, and there were allegations that they were potentially favored favoriting evil geniuses and alliance since they also own those teams by the acquisition of good game and so kind of evil geniuses and alliance were put on the back burner and really sort of just stalled for a few years they were active but certainly not making big moves in the space and then in december of 2016 twitch announced that it was divulging its interest in both evil geniuses and alliance and it gave it back to the staff and the players for each respective team um, we saw various different things, you know, PPD, the really big uh, Dota 2 player, he was the first executive of Evil Geniuses after that. And then he left and went to another team and went back to playing Dota. Philip Aram, who is one of their uh, longtime staff members at Evil Geniuses, then sort of took over as the top guy. And, and he's still there. He's the COO alongside Nicole LaPointe Jameson, who Peak Six installed this summer as their new CEO. And Evil Geniuses has sort of just been dormant. When it was acquired by Peak Six in May of this year, it, it really, it seemed like they were ready to make big moves again. This is a company with a lot of financial backing in Chicago and that they could really play ball. You know, they, it's been reported that this week that they paid Energy Esports $3 million to acquire their Counter-Strike roster. That roster is playing its first weekend as Evil Geniuses this weekend in New York, right outside my window, basically. And and um, additionally to that, you know, now they've now they've made it back into LCS and they made some Dota changes a few weeks ago. And it, it really seems like they're going to be one of the best organizations in North American esports once again. Yeah, let's talk about them today with all the changes that you talked about there with the executive team in place uh where do you see evil geniuses fitting uh in the pan in in organizations in esports today evil geniuses is one of those brands that at one point they were the biggest brand in all of esports before cloud nine before tsm 
Team Liquid was around, but not what it was. It was much more like a European-based StarCraft team before it merged with Curse. Um, and so looking at that, I think that's the glory they want to retake, right? That's the glory that they once had that they lost because of all the various different circumstances we mentioned earlier. And so when I look at that, I think that Evil Geniuses has a long way to go, and, and but they're, they're working towards it, right? I think being back in League of Legends is a huge step. They decided not to do the Call of Duty League and announced why. And I think that, you know, if you're paying $25 million for a Call of Duty League slot versus 30 plus ish million uh, for a League of Legends slot, I think the League of Legends mm -hmm. slot is a much better bet. And being being the second best North American team in Counter-Strike, like Energy has been the last month, only below Team Liquid, that's a huge deal. The other thing is, is Team Liquid and Evil Geniuses once had a really big rivalry in StarCraft and across, and that kind of spilled in a little bit to other games. I'd love to see that come back across multiple games. You know, Team Liquid is in all of the three games, or at least right now two and potentially three if rumors are correct, they will be in the three games that Evil Geniuses are competing at in high level with, with League of Legends, Dota, and Counter-Strike. And I think that would be something really fantastic to see that again. So overall for League of Legends, having Evil Genius is back in the fold, like we mentioned the first time since 2014. What does this mean for LCS, uh, having Evil Genius is back? You know, that's a good question. I, I was talking to somebody about that earlier when it was first sort of, the news was sort of trickling down. I don't know how much Evil Genius provides as a boost to the LCS, because again, Evil Genius has sort of been dormant for, for kind of like five years now, coming up on five years. So they have a lot of lost time to make up for where they used to be like the team to watch and their marketing power relative to everyone else in the industry was bigger than the other teams. That's not the case anymore. I do think they'll rebrand that and I do believe in the executive team behind Evil Geniuses right now to build something great. But I, I don't think that like we're going to see a huge spike in the LCS just by Evil Geniuses coming back. But I do think it will help Evil Geniuses rebuild their brand. Uh, your article, Jacob, is up at ESPN.com slash esports right now. Uh, in your tweet, you said that the deal is comparable to a previous bid of $30.25 million. What do you make of that price tag, uh, it being comparable? I think that sounds fair. You know, we, we saw Call of Duty teams are selling for $25 million in the Call of Duty League, and they sold 12 of them. We saw Overwatch teams this past season for Season 2 selling from anywhere from 35 to upwards of like $50 million. And so seeing that, I think this is the right price point. The one thing I think Riot wants to do differently than Activision Blizzard, obviously the founders of the Overwatch League and Call of Duty League, is I think Riot has always wanted to be very moderate, right? So a lot of these teams, Echo Fox was first sold for $10 million, and other teams in the league, Golden Guardians, 100 Thieves, etc., were sold for $13 million. And, you know, it's been two years since that happened, and two years certainly has built the LCS's reputation. I think League of Legends is something people are really eager to get involved in. And I think that we will continue to see if they expand in the future, that be the case. I th I think that the price point is about right. Yeah. I, you know, do I think Riot could have gotten more money from someone else? Yes. Mm. But do I think that's what they were interested in? No. This is a different game for them. You don't want to set expectations too high by selling to someone that is worth, or someone that wants to just pay all the money, right? Because then you set the expectation really high, and that drives a really hard bargain to return that, that in terms of revenues. And the LCS has, has had some sponsorship struggles over the last two years, too, so they really have to catch up. But in short, I think that this price is fair. It's right around what Clutch Gaming was valued at as well in this process. It, the infinite sale is not really comparable just because it was it had so much different sort of baggage tied with it. Uh, obviously, infinite was the owners of Optic, uh, who are also mm -hmm. in League of Legends or, or are in League of Legends until rebranded to Immortals this fall. Um, but I, I think that this is just about right if we're, if we're using Clutch Gaming and, and the Dictronos deal as a base deal. So once again, Evil Genius is the proud new owners of an LCS spot in the League of Legends uh, league here in North America. You can read all the details in Jacob Wolf's article over at ESPN.com slash esports.